you're listening to the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by i Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Today's guest is Kevin Anthony Paredes. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, Bernie. Glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Glad to have you, Kevin. Glad to have you. You know, Kevin, you've been with i for three years, and your short i career has been filled with admirable success for the client that you support, as well as for your own career journey as well. But you had a major setback that you didn't see coming. You overcame it with some help. And on this episode, Kevin, I want to discuss the success that you've had at i for the client that you support, as well as that serious setback that I mentioned, and how you overcame it to continue your successful career journey at i -Corps. But first, as always, let's begin with your introduction. Tell us about your current role at i and how you got there. Sure, Bernie. So currently, I'm a director of operations for one of our telecommunications accounts. I've actually been in the VPO industry for 12 years now. Um, and I started as an agent and slowly moved myself up through different roles, handling different verticals. And I landed in i in 2018 as a senior manager for one of our telecommunications programs. Fantastic. Now, I, I want to unpack that a little bit because it, you've only been with i for three years, but you've really progressed quite a bit. And of course, you've earned that career progression and success. So let's begin with that first role. When you were, you joined i as a senior manager, explain exactly what that responsibility was. Sure. So in 2018, I joined i uh, as a senior manager for one of our telecommunications accounts. It's actually a launch program. So it was an offshoot of one of our current accounts. And we handled customer inquiries for their phone lines, uh, whether it's billing, maybe they wanted to buy some items, or they had some techn technical issues. Uh, so when we launched, um, some of the responsibilities that I had was to ensure that we properly ramp up, had enough uh, headcount that was being hired. Our leadership was fully trained and ready to go, and we had a very strong start. And what kind of KPIs were you managing in that role? Our main KPIs was NPS and average handle time. So NPS is net promoter score, gauging how satisfied a customer would be with the service provided and if they would recommend you to family or friends. Um, and of course, making sure that we handle those calls in a good amount of time where we're not extending too long. And as I understand it, Kevin, you had some success in improving the NPS score in that role, right? Yeah, our, the team actually did, had uh, an awesome job. Uh, we started with 200 FTE at launch, and most of the tendered vendors or other sites were performing at about 50% NPS, and the team just rocked it. When we came out the gate, uh, we were able to already start hitting 53%, um, which actually increased client confidence in us, and they were able to provide us additional headcount by the end of that year. At i we love being accessible to your customers when and where they want. Seamless and easy, the way CX should be. Discover why top brands trust i for their omni-channel support. Smile with i -Corps. Learn more at i .com. Fantastic. Okay, so now, your next role, it was, it was a lateral move, if I understand correctly, right? Well, tell us about that next role that you moved into and about when that was. Sure. Um, so at the end of 2018, as I mentioned, when I launched it, this is an offshoot or a smaller program of our main account. So I was laterally moved as a senior manager to handle the main account. Um, and the main differences with this would be the offshoot account, which I initially launched, handled customers from across the United States. Our main account um, handled specific customers from specific states. So I was moved over to handle all the West Coast customers. Okay. Now, as I understand it, in that role, Kevin, you also uh, were able to leverage 
some of your training in Six Sigma. So maybe you can explain uh, what the specific business issue was and then how you applied that training into that into your role. Sure. Um, so I was, I'm a certified Lean Six Sigma. Um, and from when I joined this team, I noticed that a lot of the opportunities that we were seeing was our leadership uh, was not really able to uh, directly identify what was causing the opportunities and creating actions to it. Um, so instead of opting to run them through the entire Six Sigma process, I decided to make it a little bit simpler by using a form known as Plan, Do, Check, Act, uh, where you don't really need to go deep dive and uh, create you know, 12 weeks worth of analysis, but instead just quickly look at what the problem is uh, after you define the root cause of those problems, create action plans uh, and also measures uh, to measure your lead and lag to identify if your execution is good. So we really focused on leadership development to ensure that uh, our program improved during that time. And Kevin, what kind of results did you see? Uh, we had some really good success. So once the team was able to truly identify what the problems were and create actions to address and make sure we execute 100%, uh, we went from a low 50% NPS to steadily climb to a 60 up to a 70. And at that time, when we hit the 70s, we were able to end that year, if I'm not mistaken, 2019 as the number one site across all global vendors our offshore vendors. And we were also e able to meet, beat some of our internal uh, partners, internal meaning from the client themselves, their sites. We were able to beat them on some of the metrics there. With i brands can go completely virtual or blend on-site customer interaction agents with those working at home. Scale easily and securely with our digital CX platform. Smile with i -Corp. learn more, at iCore.com. So there was a lot of high-fiving going on then. <laughs> a lot of high-fiving, a lot of excitement being the number one site. Um, but of course, as we know, when you're a number one, everyone below you is trying to take that spot. So it was, it was a lot of pressure on the team. Yeah, yeah. So now we get to uh, about March of 2021, approximately a year ago, give or take. You get promoted to director. Uh, very well deserved promotion. And just a few months into that new role, Kevin, which you explained at the beginning of this podcast, what your current role is just a few months into that role, you got COVID yeah. and you had a rough time with it. So why don't you tell us about that experience and specifically how did i support you during that time? Sure. Sure. Bernie, I would love to, um, just to set the stage i did a tremendous job in helping me and probably one of the reasons I'm here talking to you today. Um, so I got COVID uh, sometime after my promotion. I was not able to up provide any updates to him because of that. Um, and when I stopped providing updates, uh, my supervisor actually had our HR department contact our HMO. The HMO started calling me and checking on me. And during that time, there was a lot of problems already. My oxygen saturation was dropping. I couldn't eat. I was pretty much asleep 90% of the day. And I really needed to go to a hospital. But unfortunately, due to the number of COVID cases here in the Philippines, all the hospitals were pretty booked. So the great things that i was able to do during that time was, one, uh, they were able to help find a hospital room for me. Uh, so that was one issue that they resolved. The next issue was since my o my oxygen saturation was low and I was already on oxygen, how do I get to the hospital since our tank is huge? Um, so upon talking to the doctor from our HMO who just called out of the blue, uh, she said, and when she saw me, she's like, you need to get to the hospital right now. And I said, oh, my wife said, because I was sleeping, my wife told her, we can't, there's no, we don't have transportation. So, and we tried to get ambulances, but there was none available. And she said, I'm going to find you an ambulance. And 10 minutes later, there was an ambulance available on its way to pick me up. So that was great. 
my whole time in the hospital, I was, there's so many tests that was done on me. Um, so many treatments that was done. I even had a plasma phoresis, which is like a blood, blood transfusion. And it was really some down times where even the doctors didn't, I had, or thought I had a 50, 50 chance. Um, and I was so glad that during this time, um, you know, our, our HR and uh, benefits team kept calling my wife every day, checking on me, making sure that the HMOs were providing the coverage that was needed, uh, that I was being updated with everything that, uh, that she was updated with everything that's going on on that end. But at the same time, knowing that me and my wife were both in the hospital and my sister-in-law was taking care of the kids, my supervisor was actually having food sent every day just so my three children would be fed and my sister-in-law wouldn't be stressed. Um, having to cook for them three times a day. So that was really awesome. And fortunately enough, I made it and I was able to stay with, with uh, stay here on this earth and make it back to the company and get back to work. And surprisingly enough, we have a program called i Cares who, due to my medical bills, decided they wanted to help and they were able to give me some monetary uh, support to also help pay for the bills. So all in all, I have never ex or expected that sort of support from any company that has gained my 120% loyalty for the, for this company. Definitely. Well, Kevin, I'm sorry that you had to have the, the experience of getting COVID, um, but I'm glad that uh, the outcome was um, was positive and and uh, you're here and healthy and and contributing to um, our success and our client success and just you know happy for you and your family. You mentioned i -Corps Cares. Um, just for the viewer and the listener, episode 26 is dedicated to i -Corps Cares. That is a program that, as Kevin just mentioned, uh, allows i -Corians, people at i -Corps, as well as people outside of i -Corps, to contribute funds that are used solely for the purpose of helping i -Corians who are in need due to some kind of a an unplanned emergency of some sort, like, like this one. So... Kevin, th thank you for sharing that. Um, I know you've already really answered this question, but I want to give you the chance to really respond to it one more time. And that is, what did that mean to you and the support that you got from i -Corps? Um, It meant the world to me, uh, Bernie. Um, never would I have expected a company to provide support like that to their employees. And it just really goes to show that not only does i -Corp. not only is i -Corp a business, it's also family, um, you know, not just thinking of us or their employees as a number, but they really care about our well-being and the support that was provided from people who I have never interacted with in the company uh, was amazing. So I'm, I'm truly overwhelmed by how much love the i -Corp team provided to me during the time where I needed it the most. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that story, Kevin. I really appreciate that. Well, Kevin, um, we're coming to the end of our time together here on this podcast. And as I think you know, we always like to end on the following question. And that is, when you're not working, what do you like to do for fun? Sure. Um, well, I have three very young children. So every day is fun with them. It's fun and exciting and crazy. Uh, but on my downtime, when they're off doing something else, I do love playing video games. So since I can't go out anyway, so might as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Kevin, thank you for taking the time to join me here on this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, sharing your short three-year career journey with us, where you had that setback you shared with us. You've accomplished so much in, in, in just three short years. And I have no doubt that you're going to accomplish so much more in the years to come that you're with us at i -Corps. And just to really appreciate the inspiration that you provide and the contribution that you're making each and every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Brent. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by iCore. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.